I've been using Zed as my daily driver IDE on Linux for a little over a month, probably like six weeks or something like that. Previously, I was using VS Code and I've had, a, I've had an amazing experience. So I'm going to walk through how to get set up with Zed on Linux. It's easier than you might think. Uh, before we do that, I highly recommend checking out their website here. It breaks down some of the main value proposition of Zed and talks about how they designed it. It's built by the team that made Atom, which ironically is the IDE I used before I switched to VS Code. And the team also made TreeSitter, which is used heavily in Zed. Great projects, check them out. Before we get into the software, I want to mention that technically Linux isn't an officially supported platform yet by Zed. You can check here, it mentions, or it has links to the tracking issues for Linux, Windows, and even web support. You can check those out for the status on them. And also here, there are instructions to build for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So check those out if you want to build them from scratch. I'm going to show you an alternative way in a bit here. I also want to mention on that note that actually just recently, oh, there's another release even, wow. They are just coding like the wind, it's crazy. And there's a super vibrant and active community as well. But back to what I was saying earlier, there's actually an official preview release for Linux now. This is the first one as of four hours ago. If you're on an Arch-based system, there are packages already in the Arch repositories. So the first one is in the extra repository and it's just Zed, simply Zed, which is kind of cool. Ignore the autocomplete here. So you can install that. That's the stable version, even though Zed isn't technically stable yet. There's also Zed Preview, which is the one I use. This is in the Arch user repository. And you can also install Zed-Git if you want to hit the top of the head for the Git repo itself. So you want to stay on the absolute bleeding edge. Like I said, I use Preview. I already have it installed. Uh, so I'll just show you the version I'm on right now. All right, I'll just do this. Right at the bottom here, you can see I'm on 0.140.0. If we go back here, you can see that this was released yesterday, this version right here. All right, now the fun part. So I'm going to show you Zed itself. The binary name has changed a couple times, even in the past couple weeks. It used to be Zed with a capital Z, and they changed it to lowercase Z. And, I, and just recently, I don't know which version they did this. It might even be the one I'm on right now. Uh, they change it to Z editor or Z editor. So you can type that and it'll open Z. I also made aliases so I can type Z to open it. And I also aliased code. That's how convinced I am that this is replacing VS Code for me. So just to show you, I'm going to run code. Z will open up. And we can close the terminal. And here's Z. So I have customized Z quite a bit. If this is your first time opening Zed, you're greeted with a welcome screen. And I think you can, I can even show you this. Yeah, welcome. So this is the screen you'll see when you open Zed for the first time. It'll ask you to uh, choose some basic stuff for your ID, sign into GitHub if you want. There's even some telemetry options here in Vim mode. I think Vim mode, when I ran this at least the first time was enabled by default, which is actually kind of cool, but it's easy to toggle here. I'm not going to walk through the whole setup. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or the Zed team. Before getting deeper into Zed, I want to mention that I customized the key binds on Zed and the key map. So keep that in mind as, as we're going forward here. I might say key binds that are different for you. I know I should keep Zed vanilla in terms of key binds for this video, but I wanted to show you the authentic experience on my computer. So first of all, this should be the same for everybody. You can do control comma to open the settings. That's really common on a lot of software, Z included. And you, and here you can see, I, I just set a couple settings, some UI stuff, telemetry, and base key map. So this is based on what I was talking about earlier. I set the base key map, map to Atom because when I started using VS Code, this is what I did right away. I'm just I have muscle memory for Adam's like base layout. I have Dracula theme active. And the reason the uh, the project panel is over here is because I have this setting here. And I also have a comment here. These are all my dot files repo, all my Z settings, but I have a comment here that has a URL to configuring Z. If you want to check out the other settings, there are many. It's very hackable. 
just like VS Code. Regarding key binds themselves, first of all, you can open this menu just like VS Code command palette with Control Shift P, and then you can type a command. So I'll open key map, enter. And these are key binds that I set custom. Feel free to look through these if you'd like. I'm not going to walk through them. They're not super important. A couple cool features about Zed. It has native GitHub Copilot support, just like VS Code. You can you get this out of the box. You got to sign into GitHub. Uh, you got a lot of other common features that that you'd expect in an ID, like a language selector. There are extensions. So if we go Control Shift P again, extensions. Oh, you can also, for me at least, Control Shift X opens the extensions, but. If we look at this, you'll see some extensions. Keep in mind, Zed's ecosystem is pretty nascent. There are a lot of missing extensions. I have a weird workflow right now where I use Zed for most projects, but sometimes I use VS Code just for the extensions. It's kind of ridiculous, but it works for me. Eventually, I'd like to fully switch to Zed, but I simply can't. Some, some extensions I just heavily depend on in VS Code. There's a bunch of basic language server protocol extensions, as you can see here, and there are a couple other syntax highlighting extensions, themes, and so on. Along with GitHub Copilot support, there's also an assistant panel. I actually haven't used this much. I'm going to dig deeper into it in the future. It's kind of cool. You can select your model. These are connected to OpenAI. I always mix it up with OpenAPI. Anyways, uh, notice I have GPT-4.0 select selected, which is cool. It's got uh, GPT-4 Omni support. And in, uh, I haven't done this yet, but in this version 0.140.0, they just added support for local LLMs. So you can hook up, for example, Olama to this. One thing I noticed right away when I started using Zed was that everything was super fast. Opening files and projects, finding and replacing multi-buffer support, code out of completions, everything was super snappy. And I noticed that it was even faster compared to VS Code in safe mode, so without any extensions installed. I thought maybe Zed was simply fast because I didn't have a bunch of extensions yet to bog it down, but like I said, even compared to VS Code with no extensions installed, I noticed a speed difference. So, uh, and that's kind of an arbitrary or subjective thing. So you gotta, you'll have to see for yourself. I could be completely wrong. Maybe placebo's affecting my, my input there. But just give it a shot. So I'm gonna demonstrate the code auto completion speed. This might be kind of hard to tell in a demo. Let me. I'll I'll just give it a shot. So I'll just make a main function here. Get it started, and we'll say, uh, create a vector of five integers. That works. Yeah, five L, you know what? I'll I'll just let it I'll just let it start here. So uh get started. Let Okay, that's not very useful. It's just a bunch of comments <laughs> basically looping, but you can still kind of see the speed. So let me let me write some actual uh, code and then get it started that way. We'll do let. Nice. Nice and fast. And it does do larger blocks of code. GitHub Copilot is supported but GitHub Copilot chat is not yet supported. Now this is planned, but that might be a deal breaker for some people. So earlier I mentioned I still use VS Code and that's actually one of the reasons I love Copilot chat. And so I kind of uh, operate on code bases in multiple IDEs. And I think that will be implemented really fast. The GitHub issue for Copilot chat on the Zed repo is super popular and super active. So at this point, you've seen a very high level overview of Zed, and I'd love to hear your experience with it. If you give it a shot, let me know what you think. There is an active Discord community. I recommend joining that if you're interested in Zed. And in the future, I'll do some deeper dives into it. A final thing I want to say is that surprisingly, in the six weeks or so I've been using it daily, I have it, it's never crashed on me. So even though it's not technically 
a stable software. It's it's pretty stable in my experience. The only thing it is missing is features, <laughs> features and extensions. And uh, that might be another deal breaker for people. There's probably something that you'll get annoyed with was that every day, like there there's new stuff coming in. It's such a turbulent project. So keep that in mind. For example, just a couple weeks ago, they added the ability to format unsaved buffers. So for example, if you like paste some JSON in an untitled file, now you can format that. So that just shows you an idea of how new this software is. But it's really fun to be a part of software that's in such a turbulent and growing stage like this and engage with the community. So I highly encourage you to join the community, follow the news and contribute if you can.